I knew nothing could ever drag my husband away from me. I had to push him out the door. I really did. And the day they came to my house to tell me, that was the first thing out of my mouth. Randy, would you believe me? I know it made no sense. I vaguely remember hearing myself say that, suddenly announcing it to this room that was mine, suddenly just filling up with people, thinking, 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 Brindy would never leave me. <laughs> um, I don't think they realized I was in Shaw. I had it still together, you know. <laughs> um, I think they thought I was going to break down and cry, but that's not what happened. Um, my husband flipped the whole world with one arm tied behind his back. And I had a long time, you know, since he'd been gone a year. And I just, uh, you know, it's hard. And I know how women feel when they lose someone, you know, in a, like a combat situation because you, you just, you know, you want to see them. You want to know. You want to have been with them and have the details and just be right moving along, riding. But that isn't what happens. And the Army's terrible about it. And awful. Um, there was no way my husband was leaving us, though. I mean, there was no way, no way. He said that was his worst nightmare. I knew something others did not, though. The mission, it was real, both of us, and I've had a decade to think about it. Um, I don't have an ounce of regret for any soldier he may have encouraged, trained, inspired, found, and reunited with his soul. I feel that my husband's strength of convictions, his moral courage, along with his dedication to the soldier, that he took this mission not knowing it was his last and not realizing that it would become his legacy. Now, you would have thought that Randy was the patron saint of the Vietnam vet on Fort Bragg that April 2001, he was hailed by the papers as America's son. Made sense. Our fathers, our uncles and brothers had all gone. And here was one of the sons killed in Vietnam, searching for their comrades. The vets came in droves from all over. I had mail in bags from people I did not know. These men came right after it happened. Little did they know that they would be treating my husband the same way they treated the Vietnam, I mean the fallen of Vietnam, the fallen soldier, because it took them a couple weeks to return him and he was returned in a body bag. They sat throughout the housing area we lived in Normandy. Um, that's like a highly ranked, protected area, but the flag flew half mast, and we had all these Harley Davidson guys <laughs> and vets, and um, we also had his <coughs> battalion of men that he had had just the year before checking in, and they actually set tables out up in my lawn. They waited, and they waited. They waited on him to come home. And when he was finally returned to us, they told me he had to be repatriated like four times. Because he came back from Hawaii, and then it was a couple of places. And every time they change a soldier from a plane, they repaid. Um, when we had the funeral, people that he'd never met, vets, many people that I had never met that he knew. They came to the chapel. They couldn't all fit inside of it. Um, they stood along the avenue and the route that led to where he was going to be buried. I wanted my husband to be buried on Fort Bragg. He was raised there. He went to high school there. And his children would still be going to school there. And it had always been our home. No one was our home.
and rainy. Never want to be buried in all like that. Who would have wanted that for anyone else? But the thing about these guys that came, they knew what I knew. Rainy had a special affection with soldier. Remember, he was an officer. These guys, they really liked him, and he had wanted to be a soldier all of his life. <laughs> we have pictures of him with a crew cut and a little fake gun. <laughs> told him he looked ridiculous. But you know, I was raised um, an Air Force brat. When I was a little girl, my mother and father divorced. I love my daddy. My mother hated him. So it's difficult for me. I was raised Catholic. And pretty much that was my home. The nuns. And I remember when we were returned custody to my mother because we lived away from her for a year. It was a mess. I prayed a lot. My daddy had to go back to Vietnam. And I told him, he wrote me every week, about Vietnam. He sent me articles, things. I knew a lot about it. And I cared so much for the soldiers. And I told him, I'm praying for you. Every day, I say three Hail Marys and two Our Fathers in the morning. <laughs> and, you know, I, I told him I'd do the rosary. And my dad wrote me back and he said, do not pray for me. Pray for What I found out years later, after Rainier died, Dad stood behind me and said, you lost your best man. And he told me that when he went to Vietnam, he flew in supplies. He said he volunteered anybody else had to go. And because he volunteered, he feels like he said he saved his life. I remember as a little girl people being killed and going over to their houses and playing in their yards while women brought dishes into their homes. I remember that very vividly and I knew something was wrong. My dad was never going to be killed and he didn't. Same way with my husband. I thought for sure never. But do you know, my husband told me, he said, now you know when the plane flies in, don't leave without something else on it. He flew the bodies back. And I thought, everything kind of came together for me, you know? I mean, you know how they say God has a plan or not? <laughs> Somehow things began to make sense a little bit. Sort of like I was included in this. <laughs> um, what I'd like to say at the end is that um, even when I was visiting him in Vietnam, as I watched him, I knew he really didn't belong to me anymore. I knew somehow he was destined for greatness. I just could feel it. I said, gosh, you know, he belongs to the world. And I may have lost a husband. My children may have lost a father. We had him enough time that he influenced us greatly. But the world ain't a hero. <clears throat> and as dear as I loved him, I think he left an important legacy. And if so, if so, and that we want to make up for it. And uh, what I mean by that is I hope that we understand that um, important for us to do for the soldier what we say we're going to do for him. You know, when we got him, we were promised health care for life. That's part of your pay. <laughs> right. Um, when he died, people told me, they go, well, don't you get that big check? And I said, well, kind of like you do if you have life insurance because we pay $21 for him. <laughs> um, and it was um, not that big. <laughs>
And um, one of the things I would like to do, and I could not understand because actually five men took me, sort of like uh, I was being told of a big top secret thing, over to the club, and they had a room like they had reserved it. Um, and we sat at a big table. I thought maybe they were going to try to sell me something. Um, but they were letting me know these were the rules. These were the rules of being a widow. They told me what my benefits were, that I would receive something called the IC, the Death Indemnity Compensation. It's something that you get when you die on active duty. If you go over there and you're killed within three months and you just enlisted, you're going to get this amount of money. My husband, who was in 21 years, it's the same amount for me. Now, if the young soldier wife remarries, she will lose it. If I remarry, I will lose it. <laughs> um, then there is what you have because he served within the military. For 21 years now. What you also know, and I'm going to remind you, is that when we get a man or a woman, we invest a lot of money in their schooling. Oh, you know, we do. We, we put a lot into them. And there's two issues on this point. One is, if we do that much, then we should do everything we can to retain them. Even if they get injured, like Amelia's husband. You know? We should do everything because that means we have to start all over. Now, of course, a man, you know, if he is seriously injured, that's definitely a problem, but now in my, my husband's case they invested all this time and he gave them all this time and did not earn the same amount that a civilian would have earned. My husband had a college degree and he had a master's and he was an excellent person. Um, you know, I've had group therapists tell me well, you know, he probably had some faults. I said, no, he really didn't. <laughs> <laughs> and they're saying, oh, you're just remembering him so well, maybe because he was gone a lot. I said, no, he really did not have any faults. <laughs> and so the therapist said, okay, well, you're still grieving. And I said, no, well, I, just, I said, let me just tell you something. I said, do you uh, know a lot of people? You've met a lot of people who are therapists. Mm -hmm. I said, you know, do you do you, you met some really crummy people? I said, have you met you know, a lot of really nice people? I said, well, I mean, like, you might even have some in your family. Like, look, nice people, great people. You know? And then there's mostly a lot of average people. And, of course, this person was trying to get me to stop. I could tell by their body language. And I said, well, my husband was one of those great people. And he was my hero before he died. Anyway, um, I'm working towards what is called the widow's tax. I don't know if you've ever heard of it. It's called the widow's tax. No one calls it that now. <laughs> but what it is, is Rennie earned SBP for me, the Spouse's Benefit Plan. Now, if you retire and you're active duty, you have an option. You can say, okay, I get $2,000 a month, let's say, for in my retirement. But what if I die tomorrow? What about my wife? I'm going to sign up for this program and I'm going to pay $45 a month so that she can get half of that or a third of that, okay? Well, the wife is, in, you know, she is, the way the Army looks at it is, okay, you're a team, even though we get two for one. You're a team, you're getting paid $2,000, but if he dies, you're only going to get $1,000. Hmm. Meaning, well, you're going to have to sell your house because your mortgage payment ain't going to take you know, all those kind of things that people don't think about. And this is a woman problem. Okay, so it's called the widow's tax because what happens is, y'all are probably thinking, well, she just wants to get his retirement. No, I don't get it. Randy was entitled to a certain amount. Um, I'm really not even sure, but let's say it was $1,500 for me. That's what he earned by living and serving in the military that is actually written down. They actually made a rule and said, hey, if we've got a soldier that um, serves over 20, then let's give him automatic SVP for his wife because he has not had the opportunity to say he wants it. But if he dies, then let's...